Hey guys, long time no see. This is just a quick video on the importance of a support. You know, the importance of a support go from just TPing and team fights or to help out a teammate to putting wards, smoke gangs, all of that stuff. A lot of people don't like support because, oh, I don't get to do anything in the game or I the less important one in the game. Like, no, that's not how it is. Especially in Dota and the team game. So right here, I was the first one to react because usually as support, you're not farming, so just look around the map, see who, need, who needs help, and I saw Medusa need help, and we turned out that fight to be for two for zero. You know, another thing about support is just waiting in, in the fog of war, just to the right time to initiate, and they initiate on which doctor, but I managed to be there and stun the vengeful and lead a TP, so another case. We lose him because Lena denied him, but at least they got no gold. So that's a good thing. And yeah, over here, just look around the map, see that someone's TP or pushing and just get him. He made a big mistake by TPing and then instantly leaping away and now we know that he's in the trees, so he can't get away and then he cuts a tree. So now I have vision of him once I go in and now he's dead. But yeah, most of the time I support, you're just looking around the map, looking for your teammates, looking where everyone is, their positioning, just so you don't get blindsided. Of course, that, that's not always the case, but usually is. Um, as you can see here, I have sentries, wards, and smoke. We checked the shop. The, sent the wards are on cooldown, and we have like one smoke left. So everything, we're using our resources as much as we can. I have a ward here in the ruin, and a ward on that hilltop. That hilltop actually helps us win the game later on, at the end of the game. You'll see why, but... Yeah, as a support, you know, I have no money, but whatever, it's worth it for the team. But yeah, with that ward, we see the people moving around, and we have that ward now. So now we can ping, and I could easily maneuver around them through the fog of war. And now that I see, oh shit, the whole team's here. Viper can see, oh, they're, they're still alone, and three are on their way, but I could probably harass. But for me, I was cut out, so I just decided to TP, but thanks to the wards, you're able to move around the fog of war and juke. A little bit easier. And so they get nothing. Imagine if there was no war there, it would have been 3v5, we would have lost everyone. So I buy another smoke, and then we see that they just TP top. So three of them are top, and now the rest that were bottom. Oh, and they use Chrono. And the rest that were bottom, we're like, oh, we can now push um, the bottom tower since they don't have TPs. And so we do. And Viper, or which Doctor is pushing bottom, and Viper and Lena are pushing mid. But since they just TP top, it's like, okay, we could just go bottom, so it's, it's probably safer, and it's going to take them a long time to get there, a longer time to get there. So we end up pushing that lane. But, yeah, just look at everything around the map and try and decide the best option for you. You know, use your head a little bit. So yeah, we push this, and then with this ward I have here, we're able to see from the backside. And so we won't get that um, cut off guard by that much, if anything. Unless they smoke. But yeah, we're pushing the tower and we have that ward in case they try and loop around. But of course, if they smoke, then we're s they're gonna catch us no matter what. But thanks to the ward we have there, we see them and it's like, yeah, we should probably back off or separate so we don't get chronoed. Vengeful decides to go in. I don't know if she was going for a swap, but she messed up and she died. And now a team fight ensues. Wish Dr. Ulti, Lena, four staff. And the the Viper and Lena kill um, the Faceless Void, but Clockwork jumps in, and team fight's still going on. But Medusa comes from the backside now and starts to kind of clean up. So, oh, right here they um they turtle the Clockwork real easily with all the slows from the Scotty and the Viper, but he still manages to get away. So that was a nice play by him. Or I don't know what the hell happened, but nice dodge there by Viper. And the lion's still there. We could see everything. and uh, They chased, but in the end they didn't end up getting him. So, oh well. But, you know, we only lost me and Lena during that fight for Faceless Void and a Queen of Pain. Two cores for a support and a middle, so that's pretty good. Now lion's dewarding. You probably noticed, like, our little place right there. But over here, look at the wards. I have a ward up that hill. Because I know they're gonna stack, so it's like, oh, they have a huge stack and I have a smoke ready to go. I have Sentry in case they have a ward here for our smoke. So it's like, oh, we gotta smoke and contest the stack. 
But we're like, okay, Medusa, you could engage since you're really tanky, but what we don't know is that they smoked also, so now team fight ensues. We end up winning. Um, Void catches the Viper and Medusa, but Medusa still manages to get off her ulti. The Witch Doctor ulti uh, Yules by Lina to do no damage, and then Queen of Pain throws her Sonic Wave. She gets a couple of us, but still. Uh, Void leaps away, and I'm silent, so I'm running like an idiot. Queen of Pain blinks away. And then the Ventral is caught out, so we kill her. So, 3 for 1. Although it's a carry, it's still worth more because we're gonna get this whole damn stack. And it's a lot. Just because of that one ward, we're able to see the stack and, you know, we see it's a huge stack, so we have to contest it so they don't come back in the game. It, the game so far, it's even. We keep trading back and forth, and that's a rank match, so everyone knows what they're doing. But my gold, I have nothing. Like, I have wards, boots. Wand, wand and a TP scroll and smokes and wards are on cooldown but yeah it doesn't matter they even have much gold you're putting your part in the, in the team and I have sentries everywhere and the wards everywhere vision is very important but yeah don't think you're not doing much in the team like I barely got <laughs> arcane boots like 20 minutes in or whatever but yeah nice. everyone does their part and right here I have a ward, and even simple things, you know, thanks to support, warding. Because if you're not going to do it, most likely no one else is going to do it. So right here Medusa shows herself, and with the ward I had, they were like, oh shit, three of them are going for her, and she just TPs out. If she didn't have a ward, she would probably thought, just walked away in lane, and then with that rocket clock, they would have spotted her and hooked her, and she would have died. But yeah, if you don't do it, no one else is going to do it. That's how I see it. So I, I never have much gold while playing support. And like again, I can't emphasize this enough. Wards and smokes are on cooldown. Use your resources. Doesn't matter if you have zero gold, just use them up. But yeah, right here, um, we smoke up with the ward. We're like, okay, Void's right there. So you can probably catch him off guard. But we don't know how many we have because I don't have a ward right there. Or in their jungle. So Medusa goes in since he's really tanky and she catches two of us but our boy catches two of us but um, Viper went around now team fight ensues we can see clockwork on the left side because of the ward I have catches the witch doctor and he dies but oh well again look three for one they always keep getting caught off guard because we have wards and we can see that they're on the other side of the map or there's only two of them so let's go for them Look at all the wards I have around the map. You know, that whole area on the left, we can see everything. So they're not gonna hide from us. And again, everything's on cooldown. And I still have some wards in my backpack, but I don't have much gold, but oh well. So far it's paying off. And right here is the moment that that ward freaking wins us the game. After a team fight, we lost, and Void has Aegis. We decide he he, he leaves and it gets trapped in the trees, and it's like oh shit, free kill. And there you go, thanks to that ward, he catches us in the Chronosphere, but he's alone. There's nothing he can do. The Clockwork is indecisive, and he just ends up dying. And there you go, his whole team's like oh well, too bad. They don't care and. Lion's middle farming, vengeful, it's not doing anything. She could have probably swapped, I don't know. And now we push and end up winning. Another thing, here's another game, a Ricky. Rikis are annoying. Any invis hero is annoying. They usually think because they're invisible, they're never gonna kill me or anything. So this is the beginning of the game. Ricky's just following Doom around, taking away his experience. And here you go, he gets the courier. But Ricky's just taking away his experience, which is really good. Setting him back in the level, so he'll probably be later in the game with his Doom. Or even Smoke Ganks. I didn't address this in the other game, but Smoke Ganks are very effective support. Usually supports are magic damage or intelligence based, but... And they have a stun or slow, so they're really helpful. But look, yeah, Ricky, back to Ricky, he's just taking an experience, and that's really, really, really helpful. Doom not being level 6 shuts him down really well. Or like slows down us by a lot because they have an Abaddon and 
an ember, which can easily be countered by Doom. Here's another example of just waiting in the trees or in the fog for a moment. Three people ganked um, Tinker, and I react a little bit late, a little bit late for stunning the PA, but we still get her. A little misplayed by me. I was kind of blocking the Ember Spirit, or I mean the Tinker. I don't know if that would have mattered, but in the end, one for one. That's fine by me. We're getting shut down pretty hard on top and middle because I'm kind of roaming and it's I can't do much you can tap it on but even this just carrying sentries and then swap stun and wave of terror Ricky and he's dead like I said they think they're invincible because they're invisible but they're easily counterable look at all the wards I have one in rune one in lane one in mid it's basically the whole river we could see everything when they cross but even if you do have wards like right here not everyone's gonna pay attention right here PA got the DD and I'm, I'm pinging hey PA's right here oh she's around our jungle be careful dude and he still dies so no matter what bad players are always gonna be bad but at least with a ward they probably don't have an excuse to get give the BS excuse we need wards or whatever and then blame it on that and they need to improve their game but whatever you know I have a ward right there in the sentry because that for de warding and we see they're going for Oshan. I put a sentry in case um, Ricky's right there and we can pick him off. But now we see him that he's going for Oshan also. So now the wards are down. You know they're inside there. It all comes to play. So Spectre uses her ulti for vision. Axe goes in. I stun PA because she's getting out. Wave of Terror, their whole team. PA dies. Ember Spirit and Ricky kill Axe. And I get trapped. Here comes Shadow Fiend, he kills me, and like I said, bad players are always going to be bad. This Doom, I don't know, bringing the whole creep wave <laughs> into the pit and he dies. Shadow Fiend just preps up the ulti and he's dead. Bad players are always going to be bad, but, you know, support, just try and do your best. Um, here's another, what is it, an example of the wards. Um, Spectre placed the ward on the top left right there and now we have vision and Ricky he's like well no one's gonna kill me right I'm invisible so I just lay down the sentry and and whenever you lay down the sentry don't try and initi initiate real quick just make sure the team knows and they're ready and then go for it because if you initiate too quick he might just escape but right here the whole team is ready and team fight happens um Axe dies, Ricky bot buys back, Shadow Fiend dies, but two for one, still fine by me, like I said. I don't think they have any wards up in the map, and they're all carry, so. this I think this was just a public match, but it's still important. Like, no matter in what rank or public you're playing, they're very important. Since we know Ricky is just following us, and in our jungle all the damn game, we put wards and sentries down so we can see movements. And because he feels so safe so much, when there's a sentry right there, he gets caught off guard and he just dies. So it's always helpful. You sometimes you just place him in random places and they get caught. And then with the ward we see um, Ember Spirit coming in and actually she's on him. And we get two plus an Aegis for a nun and their whole team is scattered about because... I don't know. Because I don't know man. <laughs> But he had the upper hand for a long time, but uh, just place wards, maneuver around it, use that knowledge, and win games. So right here they're pushing a tier 1 and I'm like, well, I'm gonna put a ward in case they take it. And on the left side, you can see Shadow Fiend. I have a sentry up there, but you can see Shadow Fiend right there. And now we know that he's right there, so I ping it out and I'm like, be careful. The axe kind of moves away and doesn't get hit by the ulti that much. So now it's like... Well, we have the upper hand because they didn't catch us by surprise by that much. And either way, they're diving at tier 1. So now they back off. And Spectre for Spectre ulti for vision. And now we catch another one now, I think. Or they turn around. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I think we get caught out later because we chased too much and we had no vision. Now PA comes in and I'm dead. I'm moving closer for whatever reason. I should have just backed off also. And we lose two of them. And even though they take down the tier one, I just I um, put the ward up there, so it's still good. 
will still have vision nonetheless. A good item, Ghost Scepter, because four four out of their five teams, four out of the five of their team are right clickers, so Ghost Scepter, it can do damage. But yeah, even though we lost tier one, we still have that ward right there to give us vision, that's important. All the vision I have, just everywhere on the map. That ward, ward just expired, but oh well. Um, so right here, Ricky's just walking around. I'm just putting sand trees in case he's following us. And he is following us, but I don't know. That's a graphical glitch. But, um, you know, he we miss. The sand trees miss him by a little bit. But we have a sand tree down there in the middle. He thinks it's safe because no one's done anything. You could get a gem, but with a gem, it's... Like, once they see you have a gem, they play more carefully or whatever. And if you die, you lose it. And they deward everything. But yeah, we caught Ricky and then the Shadow Fiend, I swap him and Abaddon Rage quit, so we end up winning the game. But either way, it's very important. Just ward up. TP when your team needs it. Look around the map constantly. Use the Fog of War to catch people off guard and smoke up. Or <laughs> smoke up the seat. Don't smoke. <laughs> smoke up the sheet. But yeah. Um, that's about it. It's how, what I usually do in games. I usually don't have any money, but wards are everywhere. And use it for your advantage. Long time, no video, but there you go. I might be making these again. Mostly to help out people. I don't know what type of videos I just fucking play. Sometimes I feel like making them. But yeah, I'll try and upload more. But yeah, in the end, thank you for watching. Catch you next.